Hello everybody, this is your chapter 14 review of general waves. There weren't very many complicated equations to use in this chapter, but what we did have is we had a lot of conceptual ideas that needed to uh, be kept in mind so that you could properly use the equations. The main equation that we had was this one. Recall that that is useful for any type of wave. It says the velocity of a wave is equal to the frequency of the wave times the wavelength. In order to use this equation you have to remember two key ideas. The first is that the velocity of the wave is decided by the medium. So the velocity here is decided by the medium of the wave. So what is the wave traveling through? Is it traveling through air, through water? The velocity will be a set number based on that. The frequency of the wave is decided by the source which means that we only have one thing up there in that equation, the wavelength, lambda. We only have one variable up there that is not already predetermined by things going on. That makes lambda the dependent variable. Given that piece of information, that's why you would sometimes see this equation written as lambda is equal to velocity over frequency. Our book shows it that way. That's a reminder to us that the dependent variable is sitting over here, whereas the velocity, again, determined by the, the medium, and the frequency is determined by the source. So when it came to actually having a problem, usually these problems were designed so that we could really just check to make sure that you understand all the parameters and what's going on. The most common type of problem that we would have is we had somebody that was in an inner tube at the trough of a wave. We had somebody that was in an inner tube at the crest of a wave. So you're at a water park. And we would say as one person is at the trough and the other is at the crest, maybe there, and then I just make up a number here, 1.2 meters of separation between these individuals. That's a horizontal separation. The problem statement might say that uh, you're sitting there and you time this with your stopwatch and you find that you go up and down so you you start up here and then you go down and up down and up you do that a certain number of times let's say that we time this out and we find that you go up and down 22 times in a minute so a problem like this is going to have a solve for the velocity of the wave. Use this information to determine the velocity of this particular wave. And in order to do this correctly, you have to truly understand what lambda is and what the frequency is. I'll remind you that lambda is the distance from two locations that are in phase. It's easiest to find that by looking from, say, peak to peak. And when you look at this diagram, you notice that I really was only given information that kind of talked about one half of a lambda. So I'm going to need to double the 1.2 meters that is here to figure out the actual lambda. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say lambda is equal to 2.4 meters. The next thing I need to do is I need to find the frequency of the wave. And if I want to make sure that my frequency is measured in hertz, like I say it's up here, then I'm not going to be able to use one minute. I'm going to need to convert that into seconds. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to find that the frequency is equal to 22 cycles per 60 seconds. That's going to be 0 0.36 repeated and I have inverse seconds. So that's s to the minus 1 which is also hertz, and so this is 0 0.36 repeated hz. So there's the frequency that I have. Here's the wavelength that I have. I can write out my final equation here, and I can say the velocity of this wave as it's traveling through the water is going to be equal to the frequency, which we said was 0 0.36 repeated hertz, multiplied by 2.4 meters for the wavelength. When I do this multiplication, I find that the velocity is equal to 0.88 meters per second. Notice that the 
per second down here does actually come out from the hertz that's right there. As a brief recap, really the focus of a problem like this is making sure that you understand how to identify the lambda and how to figure out the frequency. Remember, frequency is something that always is going to have time units in the denominator. I could also make an extension to this problem and say, if we're in a wave pool and the thing that is actually generating the wave, so a big plate that pushes back and forth, if that plate starts to push back and forth at twice the frequency, how fast would the waves travel then? The correct answer is that they would still have the same velocity because the velocity is determined by the medium. And since those waves are still traveling through water, you can see that the medium hasn't changed. So again, reinforcing what we've been saying, the dependent variable is lambda, is the wavelength. If the frequency goes up by a factor of two, then lambda will just have to go down by a factor of two to compensate so that you achieve the same velocity. Let's take a look at another problem. Let's just say that I have an individual sitting here, and here's a big cliff face that they are standing near to. This person is going to shout, and a sound wave is going to propagate out. Some time later, it's possible for the sound to actually reflect off of this wall, come back, and then they hear it in their own ear. And of course, that's what we call an echo. Let me make up some numbers now and develop a problem out of it. So I'm going to say that a person shouts, and they hear the sound 1.2 seconds after they shout. So time is equal to 1.2 seconds. How far away is the cliff face? Okay. This is a very straightforward problem. All you need to really remember is that the sound has to travel down and back. And so if this is the distance d, the sound not only has to go down, it has to go back. And so I can look at this in two different ways. I can either pull this equation into the mix and say that in 1.2 seconds it has to travel 2d, two distances down and back at a particular velocity. Or I can cut the time in half and say that if it took 1.2 seconds to reach down and back it must only take 0 0.6 seconds, so that's the half time, for it to go uh, down. And that's the approach I'm going to take. I'm going to use the knowledge that the speed of sound is constant uh, for a given set of circumstances. And the number we like to use is 343 meters per second. So that's the velocity of my wave. I'm going to fill into this equation. 343 meters per second is equal to the distance to the cliff. I'm only going to use that because I'm going to use half the time, 0 0.6 seconds. After multiplying both sides by 0.6, I find that the distance to the cliff is 205.8 meters. And that's my final answer. That's all I have for the problems. If you need a refresher on the general information, general waves, understanding things like superposition and standing waves, I'll remind you that I have a video, um, a couple of videos actually, that are posted on this same YouTube channel that you should look at. But for now, if you think you got it, let your computer know.